the first thing that we started discussing about, which is not on my list of questions, but I feel like we need to get into this because I want to make sure that um, you tell me all about this, is the deathmatch wrestling that you just did that is responsible for that little cut that we see on your head right now. Yes. Well, it's it's kind of funny that you even noticed it because I'm like, I have to address it at some point. It was a lot bigger a few days ago, but I'm actually part of a wrestling promotion called XPW. It's Uh um, Extreme Pro Wrestling. And I got into it because I was a valet for one of the wrestlers who's actually the king of the deathmatch. Um, so what does that mean? It's deathmatch wrestling is it's like, you know, your typical, you know, WWE or AEW. They're trained professional wrestlers, but they use weapons like obscure weapons. Um, in this particular case, I was hit in the head with a light tube like a fluorescent, like a light tube you would use in your kitchen or, um, and they're glass, you know, it's real glass. So they hit each other with light tubes and roll around and thumbtacks and they'll cut each other. There was a guy that used a syringe through someone's face. Um, it's so violent. It's extremely violent. And people think it's fake. Like I showed you the picture. I was like covered in blood. Covered in blood. I thought that it looks like a Halloween costume. It did. And that's what like people thought too. They're like, oh, she just like poured a bunch of fake blood on her head. I'm like, no, that's like my own blood. Like it was, there was nothing fake about that at all. And head wounds bleed excessively. bleed. Like I was actually kind of like when it happened and I felt it on my face, I'm like, God, I hope this isn't like too much. Like I hope I'm not bleeding from my head out, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, and it's dangerous. It really is. Um, but I love it. It's such like a rush for me. Like it takes performance art to an entirely different level too. Now you said you were a valet. What does that mean? It's basically like an escort for the wrestler. Like you are their manager in a sense. You just walk out with them and kind of escort them out to the ring and you have minor storyline roles, but my role developed really quickly. And that to where I ended up being more involved in the promotions and um, I ended up being more physical. We've had a few cat fights um, with Veronica St. Clair and uh, or Veronica Kane and Jasmine St. Clair. So we've had little toughs here and there. And uh, I wanted to take it to the next level physically because I wanted to show the fans that I could do it and do something as crazy as that. And no one was expecting me to actually bleed ever. I don't think they ever expected me to especially six months in to a promotion. Okay. So I, this is legal. I assume it is somehow. How? <laughs> yeah. Like what's the know. insurance on that? God, That's I can't what I even know. imagine. I wa- I mean, and it's crazy to watch. Like you're watching it and you're just like, this cannot be real. I think it like helps people to kind of like internalize it and digest it when you are like, no, there's no way that's real. It's entertaining to some people. It's harder for me. Like when I first watched them on TV, I couldn't watch it. It's just like too much. It was like so disgusting to me. But when you're there and in it, you have to go in person. I recommend going in person. Yeah. Because then you get the whole, you're like, no, never. never. Ever going to go to that. (laughs) (laughs) It's brutal. Like you have to have a certain mindset. Yeah. Like you have to be a certain type of person to be into that for sure. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. But I'm into like, I love it. Like the blood and just like aesthetically how it looks too. Like when with my blonde hair, like Mm -hmm. when I got all bloody, I'm just like genuinely happy. I was backstage like here I am bleeding from the head and people are like, are you all right? I'm like, I'm great. This is awesome. I mean, the adrenaline rush must be crazy. Oh yeah, it is. It's like a whole, you don't even feel it too at that point. Like people are like, how do you do that? Doesn't it hurt? Like, I mean, eventually, yeah, I hurt more right now. Yeah. Than I did three days ago. So right. I'm lucky that they didn't scar up my face more than. So, yeah. I mean, you said syringes. Like, I mean, has anybody ever gotten like seriously, seriously injured from they, this? People have died from death matches. Uh, people have died in the wrestling world, you know, just from regular wrestling. Um, it's dangerous what they do. But, you know, knock on wood, surprisingly so, it's not as like common as you would think, especially considering some of the stuff that they do. But they're as trained as they can be for the most part, um, obviously using like weapons like that, there's not a whole lot of training that goes into it. You just hope that you're hitting the right places. David Arquette, actually, remember him? Yeah, the yeah, screen yeah, guy? Yeah. yeah. He got into wrestling and he got stabbed in the throat because they did it wrong. And he was bleeding from the jugular and has his like hand on his throat and he was bleeding to death. Like, and he like caught himself because it's a performance 
He left the ring because he's bleeding out. He knew he nicked something. And he turned around and went back in to finish the match. Wow. And that's how, like, you okay. know, they are dedicated to this, no to shit. that level. So, all right. I'm sorry. I can't, like, wrap my fucking brain around <laughs> this. So um, <laughs> it's so obscure, I know. I didn't know that this existed. Um, so you say that there's training and you said that somebody stabbed him in the throat wrong. Yeah. I'm assuming that there is some training around the appropriate places to impale somebody. Right. And okay. like, you know, a lot of it too is kind of like common sense and, you know, a way they, they're not trying to like really hurt each other, you know, for, for the most part, there are right. some people that are probably trying to hurt you, but there's a respect between opponents, you know, uh -huh. it's just like any other event it should be especially with something that personal too where they're so close to all these vital right. organs and things like you're not trying to hurt somebody and everything that they're doing they d are okay with you know mm -hmm. or they want or they're communicating in some ways that people wouldn't even realize so you know it's not just like an all-out brawl like we're gonna go out and i'm gonna try to stab you to death like that's mm -hmm. not how it is at all it's you know, it's executed in a way that that doesn't happen for the most part. But accidents happen. It's just like anything yeah. else. It's like hockey. You know, they get the their throats slit from yeah. blades. Like, yeah, my you, husband you know, plays hockey. It's oh, does he? Yeah, hockey is brutal it's too. Brutal. Like <laughs> watching hockey matches, I'm like, man. And they and the fighting is like the part that everybody, everybody loves, loves the most. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. I wanted to play hockey when I was in second grade. Yeah. And my dad was like. No chance. No, my husband's totally going to teach my daughter how to play hockey. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, for, oh, good for you. Yeah. I love it. I think it's great. But yeah. it's brutal. Like, it I don't know brutal. how people just, they just love it. But then people wonder, like, I'm nuts for liking, you know, wrestling. And then I watch hockey. I'm like, this is so brutal. I mean, but they're, like, padded <laughs> and yeah, stuff like that. To, like, to be fair, like, there's some protection going on there. But yeah, with there's none. The, there's none. Like, people don't wear, like, bulletproof no. vests or Definitely not. They're, like, nothing. shirtless for the most part. Like. They're just all out. Like, they, you have to have a certain, like, mindset to even want to do something like that, yeah. for sure.